Given the state of the current product, I'm about as surprised by the negativity swirling around modern WWE as I am by an Obama speech that contains the word, uh, but hopefully today's rant stands in stark counterpoint to that surfeit of hostility and doom saying, because today we are building a better WWE. <laughs> We all know you can't fix a problem until first conceding that it exists, which means WWE fanboys, it is officially time to stop blaming the procession of dismal television ratings Raw has been routinely pulling in since before WrestleMania 31 on everything from the NBA Finals to Olympic curling championships to particularly scintillating reruns of Everybody Loves Raymond and admit in unison that there is, in fact, a problem. What you're looking at right now is a side-by-side -side comparison of contemporary Raw ratings with numbers from the dismal period between 1995 and 1997 when WWE very nearly went out of business. Before you pen your witless diatribes rife with slanted factoids spewed from the ignorant gaping maw of Jim Cornette, stop, pause, the fucking clench. It's a problem. And while we can tirelessly itemize every niggling nuance WWE's been getting wrong for the better part of a decade and a half from dated production that still thinks shaky cam and zoomy lenses are edgy in 2015 to entrance themes that sound like generic radio rock from 15 goddamn years ago to a movie division that couldn't be any more straight to DVD if they teleported the damn disc into your home the microsecond the director says cut there's no shortage of tweaks even the uninitiated fan could easily see fit to make but this isn't really about those issues it's about the big picture and to head off the knuckle dragon halfwits asking well who the fuck are you and what makes you qualified to opine on the wrestling business first off i'm razor fist blow me and second off we're not even digging into the wrestling side here today what we'll be discussing is subject matter a first year economics student would be actively familiar with because wwe is first and foremost a business and the first rule of selling a product is first identifying who in the fuck you're actually selling it to when you're talking the two most successful eras of modern wwe we all know two pillars remain utterly unmoved. The period from between 1987 and 1992, until recently referred to as the Hogan era, and its petulant progeny from between 1997 to, I'm gonna be honest here, I happen to think it lost its mojo in early 2000, but your mileage may vary. I refer, of course, to the Attitude Era. During both of these seminal creative regimes, the product broke through to a mass audience, yet tellingly, neither era, unlike modern WWE, was actually tailored for a mass audience. The late 80s and early 90s were a boom period for the comic book industry, and WWE wisely seized on this phenomenon with their very own in-ring superheroes. Names like Ultimate Warrior, Undertaker, Papa Shango. For fuck's sake, WWE had to cut a licensing deal with Marvel Comics in order to use the name Hulk Hogan, and you still don't get why this era was so much more successful than today's PG era? The late 90s were a boom period for rap music, extreme sports, and a time of social upheaval. WCW and then WWE incorporated every last one of those elements to woo the late high school, early college male demographic. Once again, the mass market followed. Every problem in modern WWE flows from this single philosophical schism and not one element of business wouldn't be readily ameliorated by its improvement. WWE in 2015, and let's be honest, for the last 15 years, ratings for the Raw program and the SmackDown program are down. They're down, though, from phenomenally high levels, and they're still very good by any cable standard. Right. But they have fallen off noticeably, and the teenage demographic is off. I've seen the estimates between 20 and 30 percent. It's a product too juvenile for adults and too adult for children. And I want to be crystal fucking clear here. When I say adult, I don't mean Sable's Playboy shoot adult. Not the kind of adult a pants-shitting little eight-year-old might sneak his way into his dad's closet to catch an illicit glimpse of. I'm talking golf channel, shuffleboard tournament, afternoon knitting a camisole at your arthritic grandma's adult, Mormon baptism at a DMV office adult, the boring shit adults have to do. Look, if the PG rating is your attempt to court an early childhood demographic, that's your prerogative, WW and you should go with that. More to the point, and internet smarts, you need to hear this. You may enjoy the boxer brief dry hump extravaganza that is UFC. You may have memorized every move of Jeet Kune Do and Taekwondo and Bell Biv DeVoe, but a child under the age of nine is gonna walk into a living room, see two grown men locked in a passionate homoerotic embrace on television, and think, that's neat, I'll go play some more Smash Brothers now. How well do you suppose your even more obviously fake and predetermined version of that is going to fare with the K-6th 
demo WWE probably about as well as it's faring right the fuck now. Because in trying to straddle the fence between the hardcore and the casual fan base, you've racked yourself on a barbed wire fence that separates them. Unless you're Rachel Dolezal, you can't be two things at once. In the immortal words of J.R.R. Tolkien, the broadest truths are communicated by being painstakingly specific. Which is why when you turn your product into a glorified comic book in the late 80s, early 90s to court the adolescent market, large swaths of adulthood came along for the ride because it was such a damn good comic book. And why when you turn your show into urban gang warfare during the Attitude Era to court the college demo, children and preteens came in droves to see what all the adults were digging so much. And the word for that, folks, is mass market. The very mass market appeal that has consistently eluded your company since you have been transparently attempting to court the mass market. If you're truly PG, you look at what the PG audience are watching when they're doing everything but watching your white bread wank fest, video games, comic book movies. There's your PG audience. Now Vince, survey your surroundings. Does anyone on your roster even remotely capitalize on that demo? Fuck's sake, before he went down with injury, you had gold dust on your roster, arguably the most over-the-top comic book creation in WWE history, and what did you do? You watered him down until he was basically just Dustin Rhodes and face paint in a latex onesie. You turned the phenom, the Undertaker, into a glorified goddamn UFC shoot fighter. Then you make Stardust, which is just Cody Rhodes with red contacts and a sinus problem, and don't even get me started on what you did to Kane, and every time you feel up the frat boy demo by ham-fisting Brock Lesnar's square head into our round holes, your efforts have all the sincerity of Howard Stern's wig. You're trying to be everything to everyone, and have consequently become nothing to anyone. There's nothing more frustrating than finding yourself stuck in rush hour traffic behind some myopic septogenarian. So Vince McMahon, on behalf of all of us, pick a lane and go with it, Grandpa! Godspeed!